Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. Now I've got a pretty quick intro for you today because I couldn't find a lot of history on this pattern. One of the most interesting things is it's a really popular fly, but there's relatively little known about it. Now I'm talking about the cruncher, or I guess you could consider it a style of fly. And trying to research this thing, I did a fairly exhaustive search online and looked through at least 20 of my books. And the only book I found it in was Peter Gathercole's Fly Tying for Beginners. Now there are a lot of videos of this style of fly being tied out there, but from what I could tell, most all of them are from tires in the UK. So that and the fact that it was in Peter Gathercole's book does lead me to believe that it was probably an English pattern and that it's not really that old. So what exactly is a cruncher style fly? Well, from looking at all the pictures out there, the best I can tell is that it's usually a nymph. Some folks will consider it a wet fly. It's got a pretty long, thin tail, thin body, a thicker thorax, and then a hackle pushed right up against that thorax. And the hackle can be a soft hackle. It doesn't have to be. You can use hen, but you could also use rooster if you use one of the softer feathers. And one of the coolest things about this is that those four components, you can use almost anything you want for them. A lot of the more traditional ones that I saw out there did use a pheasant tail fiber for the body with a wire rib. And that's what I'm going to tie today. And more specifically, Peter Gathercole's version where he uses a bright fur for the thorax. So if any of y'all out there are familiar with this or know the history of it, please leave us a comment. I'd love to hear it. So it's a really easy pattern to tie. Really cool looking. I think y'all are going to like it. Let's give it a shot. So there we go. Just one more of many versions of a cruncher. Pretty cool little pattern, not at all hard to tie. Common sizes for this are as big as an eight, probably down as small as a 16 or so. I'm gonna tie it on the bigger size. That's a 10, one X long wet fly hook. And I'm gonna use brown thread. Just lay a base down to the bend. Now tell I'm gonna put on this, just a ginger, go with a cream or ginger, hackle fibers here. Kinda of long, but up to you how long you wanna make it. And are you considering this a nymph or a wet fly? I'm kinda of tying it as a wet fly. So just a few wraps right there. Now before I get too carried away with that, let's go ahead and catch in silver wire for the rib. This is a size small. I don't think the size matters too much on this. Um, it's not really giving it much flash and certainly not really any segmentation. It's just gonna make this these Fezzetel fibers a little more durable. So let's catch that in, trying to keep your body smooth. Take your thread back and then catch in four Fezzetel fibers. Now I'm gonna catch these in from the butt ends, the thick end, and maybe with the, the dark side up, so if I flip it to wrap it, it won't be as dark. That's probably not gonna make much of a difference and you probably won't even be able to tell anyway. So get your hackle pliers ready, but don't use them just yet. And I'll tell you why, because with hackle pliers, these fibers are likely to start spreading out on you. I mean, we do want to kind of lay them flat like this, but take as many wraps as you can with your hands, just with your fingers, and you can keep them from spreading out. And now when you get up here to where you can't really, uh, you know, grab much of it anymore, now I take my hackle pliers and just make some loose wraps right here. Try not to pull them too tight or you will, you know, snap them. And when you get up here to about maybe a third back, Go ahead and catch it off. Just a few extra wraps right there. Now let's counter wrap this rib. Okay, that looks fine right there. And this rib doesn't do a whole lot for you. I mean, other than make it more durable. It's not really giving you any flash or any weight, so to speak but it will make those Fezzetel fibers much more durable. Okay, when you get your thread up there, let's go ahead and put some wax on it. Now here's where you've got lots of options. What color do you want to dub it? Well, the pattern in Gathercole's book was anything bright, just a fur, red, purple, orange, any kind of fur that's a bright, kind of giving it a hot spot. So I'm gonna go with some orange rabbit. 
right here. And I tried to pull out some of the long hairs, but I'm not worrying if I don't get them all. Just gonna put a big, pretty fat noodle on right here. Now it's not gonna be a wide, a very deep thorax, but it is gonna be pretty thick. So don't be afraid to put this on here pretty thick. Okay, that's a pretty cool looking thorax. I like that right there. But you want it thick because this hackle we're gonna wrap right up against it. We want it sticking out. We don't really want it too swept back. Now you can use a rooster for this. You could use hen, any kind of brown, light brown, ginger, furnace, I think it's gonna look good. This one actually is a hen. If you, all you have is rooster, just try to find one of your softer feathers and um, it'll be fine because we're not putting very many wraps. It's not very heavily hackled at all. It just gives the hint of some legs coming off. Now I do need to take my hackle pliers here because I don't have a big feather to work with. But let's go ahead and put two wraps and then see what that does for us. Is that gonna be enough? You know what, let's, let's live on the edge and go with three and see what that does. All right, let's catch this off right here. A couple of wraps and snip this excess. Now let's just pull these back and build a head. And I don't want them swept back. I still want them kind of coming out perpendicular, even though it's not a dry fly. But just a few wraps right here to give us some room for a a decent head and whip finish. And there we go. Those are swept back a little bit, but I think we're just fine. Let's go ahead and do a four turn whip finish right here and see if we have any cleanup. I think I'm fine with that right there. We could worry about cleaning it up or just put a drop of head cement and call it done. I think that's what I'm going to do. So there you go, folks. One variation of the cruncher fly. Pretty cool pattern. Can be tied all kinds of ways and can be a very effective fly. So I appreciate y'all watching. Take care and we'll see you next time.